Welcome back to the Bug Club. Now we're on to lesson two and we're going to learn all about the life cycles of an insect and what type of life cycle certain insects have. So if you remember from last week, we talked about the exoskeleton of an insect. Remember, an insect is covered in their bones, and that restricts their growth and keeps them very small. And so in order to have a period of growth, insects actually have to shed that exoskeleton or their bones in order to get bigger. The process of shedding that exoskeleton is called molting. And so when an insect molts, that allows them a period of time when they're very soft in order for their softer exoskeleton to allow them to stretch out and grow just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. So in this picture here, you can see that a cicada is emerging from its old exoskeleton. It got too large underneath the exoskeleton there, and so it came out as a fresh, new, softer adult cicada, and it's a tiny bit larger than that last nymph form that it was. So insects have two types of life cycles that they can be. They either have an incomplete life cycle, and these are usually older insects that have been on the earth a lot longer, or they have a complete life cycle. The big difference between an incomplete and a complete life cycle is that an incomplete life cycle only has three stages. They have an egg, which turns into a nymph. The immature is called a nymph, not a larva. And then they lack that pupa stage, and then they become an adult. The nymphs and the adults generally feed on the same kind of food. So this is not really advantageous because they're competing with their parents and their offspring for the same food sources. We call the babies of someone with an incomplete life cycle either a nymph or if they live in the water, we might call them a naiad. So nymphs have many different stages within the nymph category because every time they grow, they're eating all this food. Every time they shed their exoskeleton, they pump their body full of air and they grow a tad bit more. And every time they molt, they get a little bit larger until they finally become adults, which are their full size. They're never going to get larger once they're an adult. Nymphs are on land. Naiads are found in the water. So examples of naiads would be dragonflies or damselflies. Other things like stoneflies or even mayflies have naiads because they're aquatic in the immature form. Incomplete life cycles are also called something called hemimetabolous. Hemi means half and the process of growing is metabolism. So this is a half life cycle. They don't do a full complete life cycle like a, like a butterfly does. They do a half life cycle. They lack the larva and they lack the pupa. Again, hemimetabolous insects, the immature form is called a nymph. And every time they molt, we call that an instar. So the first time they hatch out of the egg, that's the first instar. When they molt that second time, it's the second instar. And most insects will have up to five instars before they finally become the adult. Adults are the only stage that have fully developed and functioning wings. The instars, if you kind of look closely on that grasshopper, you might see that their little wing buds get a little larger. In star number five, you can see kind of a third of a, of a wing or a quarter of a wing, but it's not the adult until they have the fully developed wings. Naiads go through the same process. They have different instars as they grow. Every time they molt, it's another instar. So let's take a look at an insect that completes its, com its incomplete life cycle. Let's watch the molting process of an insect that we're well aware of called a cicada. After 17 years underground, creatures are stirring. The nymphs of the periodical cicada have been biding their time. Now they march like zombies towards the nearest tree and start to climb. They invade the upper branches where they climb out of their external skeletons and assume their adult winged form. At first, they're white and soft, but they have until dawn to complete their journey.
after 17 Cockroaches also have an incomplete life cycle. You can see from this picture that the mother lays a little egg case and inside of that egg case are a number of little tiny babies instead of individual eggs. She lays an egg case and then those are the different instars of the cockroach before they finally become an adult. So in this case they have one, two, three, four, five, and six instars. Other insects that have an incomplete life cycle include a praying mantis. Mother also lays a big egg case, and then those eggs hatch into little things called nymphs, and there are different stages of the nymphs. In this picture, you can actually see what the nymphs look like inside of the egg case. They're just kind of glued together, and they have big, you can kind of see the big giant eyes. And then the little baby praying mantises will molt a series of times before they become adults with the fully developed wings. Other insects with an incomplete life cycle other than our praying mantises and our um, cockroaches include things like walking sticks, stink bugs, aphids, which are little tiny insects that cause a lot of damage to our plants, termites have an incomplete life cycle, lice have incomplete life cycles, and so do grasshoppers and crickets. Now, an insect with a complete life cycle has four separate distinct stages. So mother lays some eggs. The eggs will hatch and they become larva. Larva's job is to eat and grow, just like your job. Then they will become pupa, and then they become the adult. So there are four separate stages. Generally, the larva and the adult do not feed on the same food source, and in this case, with butterflies and caterpillars, they don't even have the same kind of mouth parts. So this is actually very advantageous to them because they're not competing with their offspring or their parents for food. If you have a complete life cycle, we call it holometabolous. So mother lays some eggs, the larva will grow and molt a series of times being different instars, just like with our nymphs and our naiads, and then they become the pupa and then finally the adult. Most of us recognize butterflies as having a complete life cycle or holometabolous, the whole thing. Here are some larval instars of one of our most recognizable butterfly caterpillars, the monarch butterfly. So every time the monarch molts, it grows just a little bit more until it's finally ready to pupate. Let's watch a video of a butterfly completing its life cycle. Notice that that caterpillar eats its own egg. That provides it with its first meal. Here's that monarch caterpillar leaving its old exoskeleton that's become too tight. Now it forms what we call the J which is where the caterpillar sheds its larval exoskeleton to make a pupa case. And underneath is the pupal case. Developing underneath that pupa case is the adult that we recognize as the monarch butterfly. 
It has to pump its wings to get a lot of oxygen flowing through so that it can finally become the adult. Other insects that are considered holometabolous or have a complete life cycle include fleas, lacewings, which are little green and um, even some brown beneficial insects, all of the beetles, all of your butterflies and moths, all the flies, all the different species of bees, ants and wasps all have a complete life cycle, which means they have four stages. So to recap, an incomplete life cycle has only three stages. A complete life cycle has four stages. An incomplete life cycle stages are called an egg, a nymph, and an adult. Nymph or naiad, if the, they live in the water, they're called a naiad. Complete life cycle stages are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Incomplete life cycle is also called hemimetabolous, and a complete life cycle is called holometabolous. So now let's build a life cycle wheel and bracelet. Inside of your kit, you should have all the materials for this labeled under lesson two. Go ahead and pull those things out and let's watch the video for it.